Hey guys, welcome to the Well and Homestead. So I thought it'd be really fun to do a video series um, on spinning where I'm using this braid from Fox and Flower and knitting, um, I'm sorry, spinning this, uh, these two braids into um, two separate um, yarns and then making socks out of them. And the kicker here is that it's 100% merino and I know that usually um, you would want to do something with nylon or maybe um, like a breed that's a little more sturdy. Um, but when I got I got this um, in 2016, this braid, and I just, I feel like it's perfect for socks, like color-wise and everything. Um, it's just kind of calling my name for that, and so I kind of just want to do an experiment and see how it would work. So my plan is to spin each braid separately and then um, chain ply them. So that would make them into a three ply. And so I'm hoping that maybe that will give it a little more durability. durability. And I know that merino is a very fine fiber. So I know that, um, you know, maybe my chances aren't as good for it to be um, as strong for a pair of socks, but I just, I just want to try it and experiment. And I thought it'd be really fun to take you guys on the ride with me for that. So my plan is, um, like I said, for like a pair of socks. So one sock would be in this um, color and one sock would be in this color and then the heels and toes would be opposite for each sock. So yeah, let's see what happens. The wheel that I'm going to be using for this is the Ashford Kiwi 2. This is my only wheel and my first wheel. And I really, really enjoy this wheel. Um, I got it about two and a half years ago. My husband got it for me as an anniversary gift. And I just think it is fantastic. So if you are looking for a um, beginner wheel, I just think it's great. And I just, I love it so much. My plans are to spin it um, with a decently high twist. So that way um, the fiber is a little bit stronger, but I don't want the yarn to be ropey. So I think my plan is going to be spin it um, you know, obviously not loosely, but not super overspun. And then to ply it tighter, I think that's what's going to work. I am, I've been spinning, like I said, for, um, you know, over two and a half years because I started on a drop spindle. But as far as like the ins and outs of things and, and the, the technicalities of things, I'm still learning a lot about that. Um, so that's why, again, like I thought it would be really fun to do this um, kind of experiment video and see what works the best um, for spinning for socks. So here is my first braid that I'm going to start spinning. And so just a reminder how I'm spinning this is I am taking this braid and spinning it onto one bobbin and then chain plying it and that will be my one skein. And then I'm going to take this braid and spin it onto another bobbin and then chain ply it. So I don't have to worry about um, applying uh, from two separate bobbins onto a third bobbin. So the color, um, the way the color is with this braid is it starts, like if you go from the center here, it goes pink to purple to pink to purple to pink to purple, just back and forth. So um, I think how I'm going to prep this braid is just, or not prep it, but how I'm going to um, split it is that I'm just going to start with the pink and split it down the middle and then just make sure, um, I'm just going to split it down the middle and then split it, keep splitting it and see how many um, little nests I can make. And then I'm just going to always make sure that when I um, start the next little nest that I start with pink. That's what I'm going to make sure just so I can always, there's kind of like a slightly little striping sequence to this. So um, that way when, hopefully, if all goes well. <laughs> Um, in my head, I would imagine that it would stripe up, but maybe it won't because of the three plying uh, or because of the chain plying. So once again, that's why I'm really glad I'm doing this video because I think it'll be a really, really neat experience um, and experiment um, to figure out, you know, how this will work up. So first what I'm going to do with this, um, with this braid is I'm just going to split it in half straight down the middle. And what's nice is these braids usually tend to split really nicely. They kind of naturally want to. So 
So then I'm taking the pink end again and I'm gonna split that again. Now I'm gonna do the same over here. I think I'm gonna split them one more time just to make it super easy to spin. So we've got four nests, so we're gonna split these all again. So now I have eight little piles and I think this is going to be good. I, once I get started on the spinning, I'll see if I want to split them down more. But just to remember where I want to start with, I want to start with this pink end versus this purple end. I'm going to put a very loose knot at the end. So on each of these little nests, I'm going to do that. So that way, anytime I pick out a nest, I will know um, which end that I want. And that was a trick that I learned um, from Jillian Moreno's book, Yarn Texture. She actually talked about doing that. This is a way to always remember where you want to start. So I now have these eight little nests, and I think this is what I'm going to try to spin from. Um, like I said, if, if it's still too thick, I might, um, split them down again and, um, just cause it might be a little bit easier, but we'll see how this goes. Hey guys. So it's been a few weeks now. Um, and I've been kind of working on this little spinning project. Um, I did do a little bit of a sample. And so here is the sample that I came up with. And so I think this is gonna work. Um, this is really the first time that I've done like a true sample where I've actually gone through and made, you know, quite a bit from it. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. I took a little teeny bit off so I could put it on a card because um, I'm really happy with this little part, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that on the camera. So I'm really happy with about that. Um, and it's still pretty uneven, um, but I'm happy with it you know I'm not a you know super consistent spinner yet I'm still working on that so um, I'm very happy with with how far I've come and I think that's what I'm gonna try to aim for and that's from doing a chain ply and so that's that's what I'm going for some um, I've got you know kind of something to check um, where I can use the singles from it I can kind of like take them apart a little bit and, and check to see if I'm kind of being consistent with my spinning um, but yeah, I'm just kind of going with it. So um, I've got my, this is an Ashford Kiwi 2, and I've got the high speed adapter um, hooked up on there. And this, um, all of this came from the Woolery. And so I've got it on the 11 to 1 ratio, which I usually just use the regular whirl that came with it. Um, but I thought since I'm trying to make socks and, you know, this is a, Merino, 100% Merino. I thought it would be good for me to use um, that high speed adapter. So what I'm doing is a short forward draw, so that way it's a worsted spun yarn. And yeah, I just, I'm trying to spin it fairly fine. And like I said, I'm gonna chain ply it. And yeah, we're gonna go from there. Um, I worked a lot on this last night. And so I kind of, 
I'm trying to get back into the rhythm of it um, after not doing it for a couple of weeks. So just trying to find a good tension, um, you know, the uptake and treadle speed and things like that. So I strongly recommend if you are new to spinning or even if you just want to like brush up the Craftsy class, um, spinning from worsted to woolen. And um, it is amazing. I adore that class. I bought that last year and I I use it all the time just to go back and like refresh myself, um, you know, just on, you know, where to place my hands and um, how to, you know, how much to pull out, you know, for the thinness or thickness of the yarn that I want. And yeah, I really, really love it. So yeah, I've got, um, let's see here. I've got four more nests left after this one that I finish. And so I, I ended up using, keeping the eight. So these are the little nests. And yeah, that's, I've only got four left and then I will be ready for the next batch.